Maybe we should be live in about 10 seconds. Okay, Chris, we ready to go? Absolutely. Good. Okay. It's 1.30. Time to get down to business. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone enjoyed the nice sunny weekend. We have had a major shift in our weather uh, in the last week. We went in three days, I think we went from early spring to mid-June. It's been great. Today, we acknowledge that this event is taking place on the traditional territory of the Indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, including the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe peoples, and the lands connected with the Lake Simcoe and Ottawa Saga Treaty of 1818. This is the home of a diverse range of indigenous peoples whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land and vital contributors of our society. I will look for a motion to adopt the, gen the agenda, uh, Deputy Mayor. So it's moved by Deputy Mayor and seconded by, by Councillor McLeod. <clears throat> be it resolved that the content of the council agenda for May 25, 2020 be adopted as presented. And I will call, oh, go ahead, Councillor Jeffrey. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Uh, just to clarify further to the clerk's uh, circulation of a motion this afternoon, that my motion uh, requiring a two-thirds reconsideration is that we return all of our meetings to 5 p.m. effective immediately. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, so uh, I don't, I'll look to the clerk. Do we need to uh, adopt the agenda as amended or are we good the way we are? Can I throw your worship? We should adopt it as amended. Okay, then. Uh, go ahead, Councillor McLeod. Just to clarify, uh, according to the procedural bylaw, uh, our reconsideration is not amendable. So, and I know I've had a conversation about this, but I just really want clarification. Is this an amendment to the reconsideration? Well, I think the reconsideration has been uh, on the table for a week. It's an amendment to the motion, but I will look to the clerk for clarification on that. Sarah? Certainly through your worship to Councilor McLeod. So the motion itself that will be presented first is not amendable. Amendable, so that is the one that we require to have the two thirds majority vote. And then the motion that follows will be the motion that Councilor Jeffrey has just announced that she will be putting on the floor. And that motion um, can be amend amended uh, during that debate as well. Thank you. All right, then, unless there's further questions or comments on the agenda as amended, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Uh, next we have up uh, declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? Councillor Jeffrey. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. I will be declaring a code of conduct uh, conflict under the in-camera agenda item 4.1 as an immediate family member has applied for uh, the um, uh, Trails and Active Transportation Advisory Committee. Very good, I'll write that down. Councillor Doherty. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I will be declaring a conflict on the motion um, to have myself appointed to the AMO Small Urban Caucus. Okay, and I guess for clarification on that, it would also be a code of conduct uh, declaration because I don't believe you got any pecuniary interest in the, the appointment. That is correct. Okay, None good. Thank you. All right, any other declarations? Seeing, your, seeing none, if you find yourself in that position as we proceed, just speak up and let us know the general nature thereof. Adoption of the minutes, item 4.1. Um, it's a resolution moved by Councillor McLeod and seconded by Councillor Madigan. Be it resolved that the minutes of the regular council meeting of May 19, 2020 be adopted as uh, or approved as presented. Um, are there any errors or omissions, Council? Seeing none, then I will call the vote. All in favor? That is carried unanimously. Are there, is there any business arising from the previous minutes, Council? Councilor Jeffrey, was that a yes or you're just slow to put 
Put your vote down. Slow. Okay. All right, then we're into community announcements. I will not omit this. That's been on my mind for a week now. And we'll start with the deputy mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. I have nothing this afternoon. Okay, Councillor McLeod. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna say how proud I am of the people that I'm seeing when I'm out and about um, when it comes to uh, social distancing. We've heard some stuff from the mayor of Toronto yesterday and today about how just disappointed he was in some of the stuff that went on down in Toronto and uh, I have not seen um, people uh, pushing the limits at least not where I have been and I also want to talk a little bit about um, about how silly I felt the first time I put on a mask to go into a store where it was impossible to completely socially distance and then I started thinking about uh, the people who uh, the heroes who do wear masks for example and I went looking uh, for um, Batman and Robin and Spider-Man and uh, Deadpool and uh, the Flash and Zorro and the Lone Ranger and even the Dread Pirate Roberts have all worn masks in public and uh, perhaps not for the reasons that we are wearing masks but for anyone who has a complaint about uh, about wearing them for their neighbor's protection you can you can cite any one of those ex excellent examples except perhaps maybe Deadpool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Comey. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I think I have a, a photo uh, to share today. I don't know if the clerk's office is able to get it up. Yay. These two <laughs> lovely ladies have a very special birthday coming up. This is my daughter, Sunny, and her best friend, Maya. And in the middle there is Coach Clem. They, these lovely girls both turn 13 this week and like so many others they aren't able to do activities as planned and uh, I think for those of us in public life we know the sort of toll it takes on family life so I wanted to wish both these girls including my daughter uh, a very happy birthday and in this photo right here just for the public and your information they had this is last year in Ottawa with their coach, they had just uh, won a provincial standing third place for K2. Uh, and I believe the first provincial wins for the club. And for those of you at AMO, you might've heard me screaming all the way over there. We were super uh, proud and happy for them. So I thank the clerk's department for letting us put the picture up. Uh, Maya Knight is a superstar athlete in town there. Most of you probably know her from the Clippers and basketball and no surprise mountain biking. So thank you so much to the department for sharing that photo and letting me wish them a happy birthday. And unfortunately, the bittersweet news is that uh, last Thursday, uh, Canoe Kayak Canada announced the cancellation of this year's national championships, including the CanMass. So uh, unfortunately, that's not an event that will be taking place this year. So they'll get to be a third place champions for another year. Yes, well, that's fine. And I think they will absolutely, uh, good news is get still get time on our beautiful waterfront. So anyway, a very happy birthday to them. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Madigan. <coughs> no, nothing today, sir. Councillor Doherty. And nothing for me as well, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor uh, Berman. Nothing for me, thank you. Councillor Jeffrey. Nothing, Your Worship. Councillor Hamlin. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, this Wednesday is the second in, in the series um, of discussions that the Institute for Southern Georgian Bay is hosting, as you know, um, on the Mapping Our Road to Recovery. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, the, the um, meeting will be held at 4.30. Uh, and there are a number of speakers who will be focusing on how the arts and culture sector contributes to our recovery, uh, including our own Jennifer Parker, uh, who will be speaking on behalf of the government sector. Uh, arts and culture um, person will also include Sarah Fillion, who runs the Matilda Swanson Gallery out of Clarksburg. Uh, the business sector will be represented by Robert Ketchen, who's uh, one of the partners in the Georgian Hills Vineyard. Um, the nonprofit sector will be from the Meaford Cultural Foundation, Robert Urig, 
And lastly, Stuart Reed from the philanthropic se sector. So if people are interested in that, please go to the Institute of Southern Georgian Bays uh, website. Thank you. I've signed up and I'm looking forward to the presentation. Um, from uh, my end of the table, I just uh, following up on Councillor McLeod's comments, uh, we are reopening uh, some facilities and the dog parks are reopening and the tennis courts opened last week. Um, sports fields are also open for individual use only and there is signage in place asking people to respect the safe social distancing. Unfortunately, washroom facilities will not be available and uh, at this point in time, as we work forward and as uh, our local district health unit, uh, public uh, uh, health officer, Dr. Gardner, is continuing to emphasize that Ontario and our area, uh, are, we're not out of the woods. We have seen a bump in our uh, infection rates. And so we're asking everyone to continue to respect the social distancing. If we all work together, we can hopefully continue our efforts to reopen and get back to, uh, to normal or new normal, I guess we'll say for now. And uh, the Sunset Point uh, work has been, uh, or is underway, and particularly around the Anukshuk, the remediation has been completed. And we are receiving a number of emails uh, from the Sunset Point Park uh, residents, uh, all saying what a great job it is. So congratulations to our staff for their hard work on that. That was a very quick turnaround from the time that we actually got our permit to the time the work was done. So we're very thankful for that. And the library will be opening today uh, for curbside pickup. So you can go online and uh, take out a book and you can pick it up between 12 uh, p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, during the weekdays. And finally, on the birthday thread, uh, last week, Councillor Madigan celebrated birthday on Thursday, September 21st. And this coming Thursday, September, or September, May, uh, I'm wishing the summer away, May 28th, uh, the deputy mayor will be celebrating a birthday so happy birthday to you guys and uh, i only did it when we're doing this by zoom so you can hit me so enjoy the day everyone and with that we will move on then to uh item 6.1 standing committee report development and operations services uh, from our may 11 2020 uh, meeting and uh, so the first motion is item 6.1.1 um which is moved by Councillor Doherty and uh, seconded by Councillor Hamlin. Be it resolved that Council received the Development Operations Services Standing Committee report from its meeting held May 11, 2020, and hereby approve the recommendations contained within the report as presented. PW 2020 7, Winter Service Agreement with the Township of Clearview. And the recommendation is to authorize staff to finalize Winter Service Agreement and to execute Winter Service Agreement subject to approval by Township of Clearview and PW 2020-8, 2019 Annual Wastewater Compliance Report, and the recommendation is to receive PW 2020-8, 2019 Annual Wastewater Compliance Report. Both of these were passed unanimously at the committee level, so they are coming under this item. And uh, Councillor Doherty, if you'd like to speak. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, that uh, actually is item 7.1. I'm wondering, do we have a deputation as item six or not today? Sorry, I'm not clear. We're, we're at item 6.1.1. Uh, and it, it, you're asking if there's a staff report on any of these items? Uh, no, uh, sorry, I'm looking at my agenda. It says that there's a deputation scheduled in advance of standing committee reports. I have not got that on there unless I'm missing something. Okay. I'll look to the clerk. Uh, Sarah, am I missing something? Uh, three your worship, no, I don't believe we have any uh, registered deputants for this meeting today. All right. Okay, so I, I apologize. Um, in in my copy, for some reason, in my copy of the agenda, there's a, there is an item for deputation. So please excuse me. Okay. Uh, so then we're back to item six point one point one. Uh, it's a move, motion moved by uh, Councillor Doherty and seconded by Councillor Hamlin. Are there any, if anyone wants to speak to an item versus pulling it, now is your opportunity. If you want to pull it, then uh, we'll sever it out of this motion. Seeing none, then I will call the vote. All in favor? And oh. that is carried unanimously. Thank you. 
Can I, can I uh, interrupt? <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, does that include the item uh, 6.1.4? No, that's separate, uh, Councillor okay. Hamlin. Thank uh, you. So we're, we're voting on the, these were the ones passed unanimously at the committee and okay. the other ones that weren't are, are pulled and dealt with separately. So Thank we'll you. get to 6.1.4. Thanks so much. Okay. So the next item is 6.1.2 and it again is moved by Councillor Doherty, uh, who's the chair and second by Vice Chair Councillor Hamlin. Um, uh, it's the boundary line service agreement. It's item 6.1.2. So it is be it resolved that council receives staff report PW 2020-9 to enter into a revised boundary line highway service agreement with the town of Blue Mountains and that staff be authorized to finalize um, the boundary line highway service agreement and that council authorized the mayor and clerk to sign the boundary line highway service agreement upon the final recommendation of the director of public works. Are there any questions or comments before I call the vote on that? Seeing none, I'll call the vote then. All in favor? That is carried unanimously. So we're on to 6.1.3. And it's moved by Councillor Doherty and seconded by Councillor Hamlin. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2020-33 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a boundary line service agreement with the town of the Blue Mountains be enacted and passed this 25th day of May 2020. So this is the bylaw that backs up the motion that we just passed. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you. And that brings us to 6.1.4, the Town of Bracebridge uh, support for ban of single-use disposable wipes. And that is moved by Councillor Jeffrey and seconded by Councillor Doherty. Whereas a single-use plastic wipe, or whereas single-use disposable wipes cause significant negative impacts for wastewater treatment plants, therefore be it resolved that the Standing Committee uh, support the Town of Bracebridge in lobbying the provincial and federal governments to implement a ban on single-use disposable waste. And further, that Council petitions the federal, provincial, and territorial orders of government to standardize the allowable labeling of single-use disposable wipes to clearly indicate that they cannot be flushed. And further, that the Town of Collingwood Department of Environmental Services develop an education program for all services all, sorry, all system users in the town of Collingwood. And I think in fact that is underway. Um, but that is the motion, it's on the floor. Are there any comments or questions before we call the vote? I have Councillor Doherty and then Councillor Hamlin. Go ahead, Councillor Doherty. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, I think this motion is self-explanatory. Um, uh, uh, flushable wipes are indeed not flushable. Um, the, uh, I, I do have a, a small concern, however, I express this at standing committee in regard to this motion. And that is that the original motion from the town of Bra uh, Bracebridge actually had an additional item. And that was to say single use wipes, even when properly disposed of as waste are an inefficient and unsustainable use of resources that contribute significantly to environmental de degradation. And this is not included in our motion today. I submit that this motion as in front of you today does not go far enough to align with the Waste Free Ontario Act, which contemplates that ultimately the best and highest waste management strategy is an overall reduction of waste and not simply diversion to landfill. Um, thus, I continue to strongly endorse the re retention of this element in our final resolution and request um, that it be included in our final motion. All right, well, I, I think the motion is fairly uh, progressive in terms of uh, lobbying upper levels of government to ban because Laura, we are not in a position to ban these things. So it would be in the hands of the uh, provincial government, I think. Um, so I'm not sure that we can be any stronger than that. Um, and I guess uh, if, it's, uh, if we're looking at whether this would be a friendly amendment, I look to the clerk for some advice on that. It does not really stray from the intent of the motion. And uh, if it's a friendly amendment, then I would look to the mover, 
Uh, but at first, I'd like to get uh, clarification from the clerk on that. Certainly, through your worship, I guess the, the question to Councillor Doherty, is that a whereas line? Yes, it is. So if it's a whereas line, I, I would say that that's appropriate as a friendly amendment if the mover and seconder are happy with that. All right. Uh, so I will look to the mover, Councillor Jeffrey. Councillor Jeffrey uh, is content with that and you are the seconder, Councillor Doherty. So then we've added a new whereas provision. Um, so uh, if you could just read out that new whereas provision again, please, Councillor Doherty, and then, then we'll move on to Councillor Hamlin. Thank you. Uh, and whereas single use wipes, even when properly disposed of as waste, are an inefficient and unsustainable use of resources that contribute significantly to environmental degradation. Okay, so that is now being included in the motion before us, Council. Uh, Councillor Hamlin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the motion as you know, uh, was framed, of course, as a problem that was created because of, as it says, single use disposable wipes cause significant negative impacts for wastewater treatment plants. And I do appreciate uh, that single use disposable wipes are a problem in many communities due to the problems caused by some users flushing them down the toilet. This action can create significant problems at treatment plants. We all know that disposable does not mean flushable. <laughs> disposable cups are generally not flushed down the toilet when one finishes their cold drink. Disposable diapers are generally not flushed down the toilet after the baby's changed. Honestly, I can't really fathom why disposable wipes are being flushed down the toilet. But in any event, I am fully behind part two of the motion supporting an educational campaign for our residents around this issue. And I am also fully behind part three of the motion supporting a petition to our senior level, levels of government that labels be standardized on disposable wipes that clearly indicate that they cannot be flushed. In other words, let's make sure our residents understand that, just, that wipes cannot be flushed and let's make sure those containers are clearly labeled. I am, however, opposed to the first paragraph of the motion that supports the town of Bracebridge in their lobbying of senior levels of government to ban single use disposable wipes. The town of Bracebridge passed their own motion on this matter and sent it to us to endorse before the pandemic became a worldwide fight against a particular virus that can be eliminated through the use of certain kinds of disposable wipes. These wipes are the quickest and easiest ways to eliminate the COVID virus whether one is moving about in the community or inside of one's home, dealing with door handles, faucets, or groceries brought into the home. In fact, I understand that disposable wipes are used by police departments in their vehicles, paramedics in their ambulances, and firefighters in their trucks. I am not prepared to say during our fight against this virus that we should be lobbying for elimination of wipes that are used by our residents, businesses, and first responders. Thank you. All right, so Councillor Hamlin, I think you have an election to make. Uh, you've indicated that you're for two thirds of the motion. So I think what I hear you saying is you'd like to see certain aspects severed out of it. Is that what you're looking for? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I guess I would be asking uh, for an amendment to the motion that would be striking the first part of the motion, the part that says, uh, be it resolved, the standing committee support the town of Bracebridge mm -hmm. and provincial and federal governments to implement a ban of single-use disposable wipes. Yeah, I don't think we need to be that uh, explicit. I think what you can do is, and you can do this unilaterally, you don't need a second or a motion, you can sever them out. So we vote on the contingent parts of it uh, separately. So this way that would be dealt with separately. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So then uh, what I will do is uh, sever out uh, the first uh, of the uh, therefores, uh, which is therefore be it resolved that the standing committee support the town of Bracebridge in lobbying the provincial and federal governments to implement a ban of single use disposable wipes. So we're going to sever that one out and we're going to vote first on the latter two. Okay. Councillor Comey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So could, could I kindly ask for clarification? So, and I think what I need to do is uh, through you, please, to Councillor Doherty just so I understand, um, because 
I'm thinking of, of single use wipes in two ways. I'm thinking of them for bathroom use where people would flush them down the toilet. And now Councillor Hamlin uh, has me thinking about them in terms of uh, those Lysol wipes, just as she described. Uh, so Councillor Dre, would you, through you, Mr. Mayor, would you be so kind as to clarify your interpretation of single use wipe? Are you applying it broadly as Councillor Hamlin implied or just for bathroom use? No, I think she's implying it broadly across because these are not biodegradable. So the issue is, is yes, that, environmental contamination. Is that consistent, uh, Councillor Doherty? Absolutely. Okay, so the crux is we are looking at it uh, from a number of levels, uh, but the bottom line on the first paragraph is that these are not biodegradable so that they end up in landmass in some form. And uh, so the concern is about uh, waste management and the environment outside of the flushing as well. So I'm gonna call the vote unless there's any further questions or comments. Uh, yes, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Um, I, I was just going to say that I support the uh, motion uh, in its entirety, including the um, uh, friendly amendment uh, proposed by Councillor Doherty. Um, I acknowledge the fact that the, uh, the document or the motion that was received from the uh, town of Bracebridge was pre-COVID, as we understand it. And um, I just simply would state that uh, the intent here is simply to make our concerns aware to the upper levels of government. As you've already stated, the upper levels of government will make their own uh, decisions. They will make those decisions in a timely fashion as it relates to COVID, or if it's in uh, a later state as we start to move out of this, whether it be uh, a month from now or whether it be three years from now. Uh, and if it's three years from now, I hope that they would take this type of consideration when they're making these, these types of decisions. There's been a lot uh, of conversation as it relates to uh, health economy and the environment as it re relates to COVID. Um, globally, I think that we are experiencing a number of very positive things as it relates to COVID because of the uh, um, decline in, uh, you know, uh, coal fire or not coal fire, but um, uh, petroleum based emissions, those types of things. Uh, but on the other hand, we're seeing uh, a significant rise in items that are disposable. I mean, you think of now, uh, we are a society that are wearing uh, masks, we're a society that are using disposable gloves, we're using disposable uh, wipes, et cetera. And I think that uh, as part of this, and I think that there's sort of an underlying current to what, what Councillor Doherty is putting together, or putting forward, and that is that uh, recognizing these are uh, temporary as it relates to COVID, we need to be looking at alternatives. So in the household, as an example, is it necessary for somebody to be using these types of wipes versus Lysol or, sorry, not Lysol, but just vinegar and uh, a, a regular cloth that could then be washed, that type of thing. And th those are the type of very big macro types of conversations that we as a society will have to have long-term because um, I, I can't imagine what, the uptake has been in facilities like the hospital, the um, uh, long-term care facilities, uh, you know, even town hall, for example, just in the number of items going into the trash, as opposed to some type of other diversion, because they are now, they're deemed PPE and they can't be reused and they have to be contained. They have to be in a bag that's enclosed, et cetera. And I mean, that's a, that is a significant issue and it's going to have global consequences. And uh, I, I think this is a start of a, a much bigger, longer conversation. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'm going to go around just to make sure, Councillor Hammond, since you've already commented, is there anybody else that hasn't commented that would like to comment? Go ahead, Councillor Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to say to anyone who might be listening that although um, our deputy director has suggested that vinegar and a cloth may be uh, sufficient, um, I just took the opportunity to Google that quickly. And the first th thing that came up with it was the David Suzuki Foundation website. And its first thing on there is, note, although vinegar has disinfectant properties, it is not effective against the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. So please do not use that <laughs> for uh, this purpose during this time. Thank you. All right, so we'll get back then to the motion and we are leading out the paragraph asking for the ban and we will just deal with the balance of the 
and further and further paragraphs. And so I will call the vote then. All in favor? And that is carried. Now I will call the vote on the therefore be it resolved that the standing committee support the town of Bracebridge in lobbying the provincial and federal governments to implement a ban of single use disposable wipes. So I'm calling the vote on this paragraph only. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, that latter one was carried unanimously and the other one was carried uh, with two opposition. So I'm just gonna get clarity from Councillor Hamlin and Councillor Comey, because I think maybe we flipped it. Uh, Councillor Hamlin, in your earlier comments, you'd indicated you were prepared to support the latter two paragraphs, but not the ban. Yes. So, is that, so maybe then just for clarity of record, uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the recorded vote so that we can clarify that. So on the first vote, I think you meant to vote in favor of Councillor Hamlin and then oppose the last one. That's if, I didn't make, if I didn't make that clear, my apologies. So I'll, I'll ask for a recorded vote and I'll hand it over to the clerk. Certainly, since a recorded vote is requested and these are on the last two and further that lines, all those in favor? Please raise your card. Yes or no? Yep. After the last two? The last two. Last yeah. two. All right, so that's carried unanimous. And then a recorded vote then on the first portion, and that's the therefore be it resolved that the standing committee support the town of Bracebridge in lobbying the provincial and federal governments to implement a ban of single use disposable rights. All those in favor? And all those opposed? It's Councillor Comey and Councillor Hamlin. Motion is carried. Hey, thank you, Clerk. And that brings us to item 6.1.5. Uh, this is the bylaw that deals with the winter service agreement with the Township of Clearview. And it is moved by Councillor Doherty and seconded by Councillor Hamlin. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2020-34 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a winter service agreement with the Township of Clearview be enacted and passed this 25th day of May, 2020. Uh, so before I call the vote, I'll just see if there are any questions or comments from council members. Seeing none, then I'm gonna call the vote. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. And this brings us to uh, staff reports, item seven and 7.1 is the Sunset Point Restoration and Repair. It's a verbal update. And I think it's being done jointly with, with uh, Executive Director Culver and uh, Acting Director Milanovic. Hi, Your Worship, uh, it's, it's Dean here. My, I, my apologies to everybody. I, my uh, computer's not cooperating, so I'm only able to kind of get on here through audio. So I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, so uh, the, the reason why this was put on the agenda was because um, we started uh, work a few weeks ago on Sunset Point and had an outlook of about three to four weeks um, uh, based on what the contractor estimated, uh, but the contractor, Celia and Arnold, has done an amazing job of, of uh, basically moving through the work. Uh, so we got to the latter part of last week or middle of last week. and. Um, they said, you know, we're closing in on completion. And we knew that there was some um, latitude within the budget to take care of some other pieces of Sunset Point uh, that had been damaged in the April storms, uh, as well as some possible some restoration work uh, that um, we had looked at uh, basically picking away at over the summer. Um, but, uh, but knowing that these, uh, this contractor gets this done work uh, more effectively, more efficiently, um, and actually at a cheaper cost since they were already mobilized. So we asked uh, the clerk to put, uh, to see if we can put this on the agenda so that if um, through the latter part of last week, we needed to ask for an adjusted budget to cover any of the additional work, um, the opportunity would be there. But as it turns out, uh, Celia and Arnold have done an amazing job of, of working with us and for our existing budget with no extra funding needed, uh, we're getting a, a great deal of extra work completed as well as the complete restoration of the park following the shoreline repairs and um, and we're hopeful weather pending uh, but at this point it looks very good uh, that we'll be ready to reopen the park uh, on June 1st so uh, so on budget and, uh, and with the June 1st opening 
That's fantastic news, Dean. Uh, congratulations to you and your department. Um, are there questions or comments from council? Seeing none, um, do we want, uh, is there a direction involved here or are we good to go? I'll look to the- uh, Your Worship, no, this yeah. is just an update for the sake of council. Okay, well, I appreciate it, Dean. Uh, and again, uh, I've been getting lots of what, emails from uh, residents about the quick work. And uh, so thank you and congratulations to your staff. And I see Councillor McLeod has, uh, would like to speak. I'm sorry, I just, I heard nobody say anything and I'm pretty sure on behalf of all council and uh, woohoo is uh, sort of where I was going with that. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. Our pleasure. All right, thank you very much. And that brings us then to uh, item, 8.1, and this is a motion to uh, reconsider uh, the council and standing committee meeting time. Uh, notice was provided by Councillor Jeffrey at the May 19, 2020 meeting. As this is a notice of reconsideration under our procedural bylaw, Councillor Jeffrey is allowed to speak uh, briefly to the uh, rationale uh, for bringing the motion, and then we go straight to the vote. It's, uh, it's not open to debate. Councillor Jeffrey. Hmm. Um, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. So just further to the comments I made when I presented the notice at the last meeting, um, the stress for me uh, working as an essential service throughout this has been a lot to add three half days into my week with clients. Um, so needing uh, information, read their applications for subsidies and pivoting their businesses. And also in terms of addressing um, the ability for everybody to attend. And I think if we change a time and for, for one person and it makes it impossible for someone else, then we're not treating everyone equally. So that's the intent of me moving forward with this motion. Okay, and just for clarification for council. So we're voting on this motion moved by Councillor Jeffrey, seconded by Councillor Berman. Be it resolved that council, uh, council hereby authorize, no, that's not it, sorry. Uh, be it resolved that council hereby reconsider the time change for council and standing committee meetings as decided at the April 27, 2020 meeting of council. And it requires a two thirds vote to carry. So I will call the vote then, all in favor. Let me count one, two, three, four, five, six, opposed. And so that does achieve the two thirds uh, requirement. Uh, so the next motion is moved by Councillor Jeffrey, seconded by Councillor Berman. Be it resolved that council hereby authorize the change in meeting time for regular meetings of council and standing committees to the daytime hour of, I'm reading the wrong one. It's uh, to the daytime hour of 5 p.m. for the duration of the declaration of the emergency. And uh, Councillor Jeffrey, would you, any further comments before I open it to the floor? No, I think it's self-explanatory. I'll speak last if I need to. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments from council? Councillor McLeod. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when we say to the declaration of emergency, we're talking about the provincial government. So if there were to be, uh, this is just a re-clarification for me on this issue. When the premier stands in front of the podiums at Queen's Park and says the, uh, the emergency is over. The following meeting that we will have will be at five o'clock in person in the chambers. Is that what we're thinking? Uh, well, I will look to the clerk. I think we uh, initially were putting in for the duration because that's how the initial motion was phrased. There are states of emergency by both the provincial and the county levels of government, which I think allow us uh, under the uh, legislation to have changed the time and do this by Zoom. Uh, in terms of meetings following, uh, my understanding is that our resolution for the Zoom meetings is only during a state of emergency as well. So once that happens, I think we will be going back to in-person meetings or some variation thereof, given the times we are living in. And uh, so I think it will be circumstance dependent uh, in terms of what the province uh, or county provide to, for us to going forward. Uh, and a consideration with staff. And I would ask either the CAO or clerk to, for any additional comment from the corporation. Certainly through your worship to members of council, this, this resolution will only amend the section of the procedural bio that speaks to the time. So we did uh, make the amendment to include under electronic participation under the declared state of emergency, whether it's provincial, local, or through the health 
uh, authorities. So this motion is strictly, it removes any reference to the provincial declaration of time because five o'clock is the original um, time that's within the procedural bylaw. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments, Council, before I call a vote? Councillor Comey. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I put the original motion forward requesting the time change and I'm glad we're bringing up Zoom and I'm glad we're bringing up extraordinary circumstances and reminding ourselves that we're in the still very much in COVID. And for that reason, and in consideration for staff taking a call at 5 p.m., most likely the majority of which will be in their homes, in their personal space, at a time when staff, no doubt like the rest of us, are juggling a work life balance. That is extraordinary. And with schools and possibly day camps and summer camps not happening, I think we're putting a big ask on our staff to come into their home space right through the supper hour uh, to please the needs of council. So going back to the original intent, it was to make the work-life balance on staff easier during an already incredibly stressful time for everyone. So I'd like to share those thoughts with members of council who they themselves are probably squished in a unique space in their homes under unusual time. So I put that out there for consideration. Uh, I have school age children. They're not even in high school yet. And whatever you see behind me here is a dramatization of what is literally happening on the other side of that door. So I think we can all appreciate the stress that we are all under trying to juggle this. Thank you. I appreciate those comments and I think Councillor Jeffrey's point is that uh, when members of Council are finding that they're not able to participate, uh, really that uh, has to be an extremely important <clears throat> consideration in, in our decisions moving forward because it is the Council that makes the decisions that move the town forward with staff's input. But I certainly take your, your comments. Uh, Councillor Doherty. Uh, thank you, Worship, and you uh, actually summarized quite well the, the point of my comment, and that is that no change should prevent any member of council to attend regular council meetings. Uh, I um, was supportive of this motion in the first place uh, because I was operating on the assumption that this was a convenience for all, and it has been... Um, now demonstrated that it is not a convenience for all, number one. And number two, um, staff have been asked multiple times uh, just to ensure that uh, these uh, exceptional times uh, do not provide any um, additional challenges for them in um, undertake um, in um, uh, participating in council meetings as they usually do. And over and over again, we were said that whether it was 3.30 or whether it was 1.30 or whatever time it was, it, it was uh, the same as far as staff were concerned. Thank you. I know Councillor Jeffrey had her hand up, but before I go to Councillor Jeffrey, she's asked to speak last. I will see if anyone else. Go ahead, Councillor McLeod. Thank you. Uh, through you, uh, Your Worship, uh, and I'm not entirely sure which staff member I ought to direct this to, or perhaps it sh should go to uh, uh, Councillor Doherty. Uh, from whence does that information come? Uh, have we have we surveyed the staff, or is this anecdotal? And, and if so, can I see that document? Uh, well, I saw Councillor Jeffrey uh, nodding her head. Um, but I guess the same could be said for the initial intent of the motion. Was there, a, did Councillor Comey have a survey? Uh, and, uh, and if so, could she provide that as well, I guess? So I, I think really, I understand the, the content of the motion here, but I think this is really something that council, uh, it, the primary players around the council table are the council members. And while I appreciate the desire to accommodate staff, I think if there is a point in time when council members are not able to attend, then that has to take precedence over the staff considerations 90% uh, of the time. And I, I guess we, there's not, it's not impossible that uh, staff considerations could prevail in special circumstances, but I think as a 
ongoing matter of practice, it is absolutely essential that we accommodate council first when it comes to council meetings. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you had your hand up. Uh, just very briefly to the whole point of uh, consultation, uh, I stand to be corrected, but my understanding is that the original motion, um, although well-intended, there was no consultation with staff to the best of my knowledge. Um, and if there was, it maybe was one or two. Certainly the CAO at the time was not consulted. Uh, and then the second would be that there, there is no, it's, it's unfortunate that others don't have their um, mics muted. Um, the other would be that simply that um, there's no ideal time. And at the end of the day, as we start to uh, move to some semblance of what looked like pre-COVID, and I'm really speaking more from a business standpoint, uh, it has to be, and with all due respect, Councillor Cal Comey, uh, Councillor Madigan operates a business and needs to be at the table. Councillor Jeffrey operates a business and needs to be at the table. When they ran for office, they ran under the, under the knowing that meetings were at certain times and therefore could adjust their schedules according. We made this accommodation and, and I fully supported it at the time. Uh, but I do think that now as we slowly move and we start to open up, those who are working of the nine of us, there should be some consideration. And I say this with all due respect to the staff because I have the most respect. And I'm going to be treading very lightly when I say this. And I'm sure that I'm going to get some flack from somebody. But I can't survive on the pay alone that I am making from council. I've got to earn a living. The staff who are attending our weekly meetings, to the best of my knowledge, uh, are excellent staff and they, are, and they are well compensated. And as a result, I think it's the nine around the table that we need to look to first to ensure that they are able to attend the meetings with odd exception. And I know that Councillor Coleman, you haven't been able to attend a couple of meetings recently, but it's imperative that the nine decision makers be first and foremost, and, uh, and then the others uh, follow. And I know that that's not very eloquent, and I know that I probably will ruffle some feathers, but um, I just feel that uh, in consideration for those uh, in particular, myself, Councillor Madigan, Councillor Jeffrey, who, uh, and Councillor Berman, who do have outside employment, um, it, this accommodation should be made at this point. And I think going back to five just makes sense from a continuity standpoint, given the fact that we operated at five uh, prior to, and rather than having some sort of phased approach, which was suggested with the 3.30 time, let's just go back to five. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor Comey. Thank you. Through you to Deputy Mayor, um, you said a lot of things there. Was one of the things you mentioned, Deputy Mayor, that the original motion was not passed through to our former CAO? Was that one of your comments? Deputy Mayor? Uh, through you, that was my understanding that uh, the CAO at the time was not, not uh, privy to that. Uh, if he was, I, then I sincerely apologize, take it back, but my understanding is he was not aware. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to, uh, to the clerk, Clerk almost if you could just confirm that you, uh, Executive Director Skinner and CEO Amin, acting CEO or CEO Amin at the time were in fact copied on the intent uh, of that motion before I even brought it forward. Clerk Almas. Certainly through your worship. Um, yes, I was copied on it. I know Freed was aware um, as well. I'm not sure about the executive director at the time, um, but we were um, advised as in accordance with our procedural bylaw um, that that notice has to be provided to us in advance. Thank you. That, that's, that's a fair, fair comment and, and thank you for the clarification. It was not made clear at the time when we uh, voted. And uh, so with respect, Thank you for bringing that forward, and I, and I retract that comment, Councillor Comey. Uh, thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, appreciate that. And uh, I did actually make comment at the time when I brought the motion forward that I had circulated it to CAOMN because I was concerned about what time in particular would work. I did not pull a time out of thin air. I absolutely circulated it. I'll further say that I'm disappointed that this conversation is descending into 
uh, who's working and who isn't. I am confident that all members of council, myself included, have other sources of income or employment. And even if they did not, it would not be a yardstick to which I would measure them by, especially a female majority council. I would hope this is a time when we're not descending into measurements of people's status or worthiness by what it is their employment is. So that's concerning to me, to you, Mr. Mayor, to Deputy Mayor, that we be really cognizant of those types of comments. And uh, I have nothing more to say on the matter. I said it all in my original motion and again now. Thank you, Councillor Plumbing. I, I will look to the Deputy Mayor, but I think the comments that are being yeah. made around the table are not relating to gender or saying that people with outside employment have more sway than those that don't. I think what it is saying is that we all have a voice around this council table. And if the scheduling issue prevents any council member for whatever reason from making their voice known at the council table because they're precluded from the meeting, that that is not a viable option. And so what the thrust of this motion, uh, and Councillor Jeffrey has yet to speak, but certainly from what I've understood from her comments so far, is to make sure that we're having the meetings at a time when all council members are able to attend and be present to cast their votes. Uh, so unless there's other comments, I'm gonna pass it over. Oh, Councillor Madigan. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity to speak, and uh, thank you for everybody's comments. Uh, through you to Council, the clerk can attest that for the last six years, uh, I have always uh, changed my plans to meet on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Uh, those are the only two days that I actually physically work in one of my uh, establishments. Uh, and I have asked uh, every year if we can keep that in consideration, and unfortunately, it just didn't work for everybody else. Um, so uh, at uh, a loss to income to my salary, sometimes, well, not sometimes, I every time changed. So uh, I, uh, I appreciate Councillor Jeffrey bringing this up and, uh, and I don't think anybody's comments were, uh, were supposed to be taken the way they were. Uh, we're elected as councillors, not male or female, and we all have jobs to do. So uh, I love the team that we uh, are on and uh, pushing forward through these crazy times, we just have to get back on track. Uh, but we are elected first and foremost as representatives and stewards of our community, uh, not uh, whether we're male or female. So uh, I, I don't think anything was that ill will. And I thank everybody for uh, bringing this back up. So it will allow me to uh, be part of the uh, coming out of this uh, within my businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. If there is no one else that wants to comment, I'm going to pass it over to Councillor Jeffrey for last uh, last word. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. I don't think I, I need to say too much uh, more. I think you've clarified uh, quite accurately, as has uh, Councillor Doherty, and I think Councillor Madigan brought a good wrap uh, to it. So um, my intentions are there, and to mollify uh, Councillor McLeod, I did in fact speak with the clerk, and the clerk spoke to department heads at a department head meeting, and um, so that's how it was done. That's it. All right, then. We've had a vigorous debate and uh, uh, aired the issue. So with that being said, I'm going to call the vote. I will read it again for clarity because uh, I don't think I read it properly the first time since we changed the time. So to make sure I have this absolutely correct. It is moved by Councillor Jeffrey and seconded by Councillor Berman. Be it resolved that Council hereby authorize the change in meeting time for regular meetings of Council and all standing committees to return to 5 p.m. effective immediately. And uh, with that said, I will call the vote. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, and opposed? Duly noted. So that is passed. And the next item is the endorsement of the AMO Board of Directors appointment. And uh, so, uh, Deputy Mayor, I am going to uh, renounce the chair, hand it over to you since I'm putting this motion on the table. It is moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. Whereas the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, is a nonpartisan entity that represents the interest of municipalities on policy and program matters that fall within provincial jurisdiction, 
And whereas AMO's board of directors is comprised of elected municipal officials from all regions and sizes of communities to form a broad base of support and provide AMO with the feedback and emphasis required to carry the municipal message to the provincial government. And whereas the AMO conference will be held virtually from August 17 to 19, 2020, during which the annual general meeting will occur, followed by the election of AMO's board of directors and reporting caucuses, be it resolved that Council of the Town of Collingwood endorse Councillor Deb Doherty to stand for election on AMO's board of directors and small urban caucus. And further, that Council assume all costs associated with Councillor Deb Doherty attending AMO's board of directors meetings up to the allocated and approved budgeted amount. Are there any questions or comments? And before I, I think uh, just to be clear, Councillor Doherty has recused herself. So she has left the meeting for this uh, item. Um, so uh, I will open the floor to comments before I call the vote. Councillor McLeod. Uh, what is the uh, budgeted and allocated amount that is discussed in this motion? I don't know, but I think it would probably be similar to uh, what uh, is in Councillor Jeffrey's budget. And maybe Councillor Jeffrey, you can tell us what's in your FCM budget. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson, through to Councillor McLeod. Yeah, there's 7,500 in my FCM budget. But this year will be a light year, given that um, I know going forward, a lot of the meetings will be virtual. I'm not sure about AMO, but uh, 7,500 might even be light um, for Councillor Doherty in the normal course, because there's a lot, a lot of meetings in AMO. I'm very supportive. Yes, okay. And, and I think, uh, I guess, Councillor McLeod, just to go further on that, that will be discussed during the budgeting process uh, with input, I think, from Councillor Doherty, if, uh, if she's elected. Uh, to tell us what her meeting schedule is and what the requirements are. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Hamlin. You're, you're muted, Councillor Hamlin. Okay. Oh, you're good now. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to say how pleased I was that Councillor Doherty was putting her uh, name forward to stand for this position. Thank you. Good, thank you. All right, unless there's any other, oh. Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, um, I, I guess two things. One, did you relinquish the chair? Yes, I did. Um, two. Oh, yes, no. <laughs> yes, I did. And thanks for reminding me. <laughs> uh, this is a comment through to the rest of the table, given that uh, our colleague will be running at uh, AMO in uh, August, which is now an online uh, conference. Uh, but uh, I, I don't have the answer to this, but maybe we can get an answer prior to uh, what we need to do if we need to actually register as a, an online participant to be able to vote and support. Uh, I would assume that's the answer, but uh, we can clarify. Anyway, I think this is fantastic, so. Uh, yes, Mayor Saunderson. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Um, before you call the vote, I, I just want to speak in favor. Uh, we have seen uh, how important a role Councillor uh, Jeffrey has played through FCM. And uh, we have, this council has in the past had AMO uh, board members, but not for, uh, for the last eight years, I think. So it'll be nice to get back in that uh, theater. And um, these uh, positions, I think, uh, speak well of our council, speak well of Collingwood but also give Collingwood uh, an ability to have a voice in uh, decisions with upper levels of government that uh, impact us uh, in our daily work at town and our residents. Uh, so I absolutely support this. And uh, with that being said, I will pass it back to the Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Any further questions prior to calling the vote? So seeing none, then I will call all those in the affirmative. And that is carried unanimously. Congratulations, uh, Councillor Doherty, and we'll uh, inv invite her back to the table or to Zoom. And uh, back to you, Mayor Saunderson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Old habits die hard, I guess, although it's not that old a habit, so I should be better at it. Um, uh, so I, 8.3. Uh, this is a support for Oakville Economic Task Force. And the rent relief advocacy piece and it is moved by Councillor Doherty and seconded by Councillor Jeffrey. Uh, whereas the Council of the Town of Collingwood did receive correspondence 
from the Oakville Economic Task Force on May 19, 2020 regarding rent relief advocacy during the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas it is understood that few landlords have applied for the Ontario Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program, and many tenants cannot benefit from the program, including many vital businesses and property owners in the town of Collingwood, now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Collingwood endorse the recommendation of the Oakville Economic Task Force to suspend evictions of commercial tenants for a minimum of six months and to enhance the terms and ease of access to the Ontario Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program as follows. Number one, allow tenants to make an application for the rent assistance if the property owner does not want to apply or is ineligible. Two, allow property owners to make one application for all of their properties rather than individual applications. And three, lower the 70% revenue decline threshold for tenants. And that a copy of this motion be forwarded to the appropriate upper levels of government. And uh, Councillor Doherty, this is your motion. Would you like to speak to it now or last? Thank you, Worship. I'm happy to speak to it now. Um, as we all know, uh, commercial and retail businesses have been hit hard uh, by the province's declaration of emergency. Many have had zero revenues uh, since mid-March. Um, this is a crisis of unprecedented proportion for small business in Collingwood and indeed around the province and the country. The Ontario Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program was announced in early May, offering forgivable loans up to 50% of commercial rents in exchange for which the tenant's rent is reduced to 25% and the landlord absorbs the other 25% but there has been very little uptake on the program so far. And landlords are also reporting confusion about what is on offer. Tenants are complaining that they may be qualified, but their landlords aren't keen to sign up. Uh, so, um, and we see uh, from um, uh, comments that have been made within our own um, economic support and recovery task force, that there have been very few landlords to um, indicate support for or uh, uh, intention to take advantage of this program. So this resolution that you have in front of you proposes to address these issues and to further enhance the access uh, to the um, Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program and to extend eviction protection from three months which it is presently to six months to allow for any delay in the intake of applications. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doherty. Are there any other questions or comments, Council? Councillor Jeffrey and then Councillor Hamlin. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. The only thing I would add is that uh, perhaps we should circulate to FCM and to AMO because I know they are already advocating um, on this matter with those their relevant orders of government. Um, so um, if the mover deems that friendly, I would like to add those circulations. Mr. Doherty. Uh, thank you. I did clarify with the clerk and um, by the um, usual appropriate upper levels of government, uh, it was meant to include AMO and FCM. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in, I think, more explicitly, but uh, you're comfortable with the amendment and Councilor Absolutely. Was, was the second or so. I think we'll add that in. Um, Councilor Hamlin. There we go. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. My heart goes out to all the business owners, including those who are tenants in our community due to no fault of their own. They are virtually all in a terrible position. <laughs> Having said this, I believe it's premature to be making these suggested changes to this program. Uh, contrary to Oakville's comments that, that uh, landlords are not taking up on this program, in fact, tomorrow is the first day that a property owner in Ontario has up to 10 tenants can apply tomorrow. It's not open yet to register as a landlord. 
<laughs> tomorrow's the first day. And then the day after tomorrow in Ontario, you can apply if you have more than 10 tenants. So by Wednesday this week, we'll, we'll have had all our landlords can apply if they want to apply on the first day. The program's been spaced out across the week because the federal government who's running the program thinks they need to do that because of all the volume. So where I'm coming from on this is we don't know what the problems are yet. And, and, and the premier has been very uh, blunt in saying that if the landlords don't take up on this program, he is going to, uh, you know, there will be consequences. Those are exactly his words. There will be consequences. So we can expect legislation uh, that we haven't seen on the provincial side, which is where they could impose, uh, you know, remedies as Oakville suggests, which is um, allowing uh, rent-free months without eviction. So I'm not opposed, you know, to all kinds of relief for businesses. And as I say, my heart goes out to them, but I just, you know, the program hasn't started yet. And I feel that we shouldn't be wading into changes to the program until we know what the problems are. But those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dory. I'm going to go around to see if anybody else has comments. Councillor Madigan. <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Saunderson. And just to everybody on council, and this clarification because uh, people have asked me about this. Um, I can vote on this because unfortunately businesses owned by anybody um, that is an elected official within uh, our country are not qualifiable. So none of the businesses that I own, unless Kathy's going to tell me different, and God bless you, I would love for you to tell me that um, because we have not been mm -hmm. able to get any money and it has been coming out of our pocket. So I'm, until Kathy speaks, I'm still going to give my speech. Um, where we're at in, in the town of Collingwood, being in business here since 1991, uh, forget about the rest of Ontario, is in dire need. We're going to see businesses, uh, unfortunately, not maybe not open up. Uh, I've got friends that have been in the restaurant business for 20 plus years that unfortunately, with the thin margins, it could go out within three months. So where we're at right now is we need to help. If we don't help, if we don't wade into anything and just wait, unfortunately, they're not going to reopen. And then our economy is not going to get moving when the healthy get the healthy again and the people get out. So as a community, we have to support our small businesses because small businesses run our country. So if we don't wade into this, then who will? So my, I give props to our MP, Terry Dowdle, who has been helping with our sister community, saying that they're not. Uh, and good for him for doing that, because if we don't speak out, that's what we're elected for. We're not elected to sit back and wait. We have to be leaders in this and push forward and help our businesses that keep our community thriving and make people continue to come to Collingwood. They're coming here for the small businesses and the lifestyle. So if we don't do this today, who's going to do it for us? Thank you very much, Kathy. I wait for any information that you can give me privately to make me smile other than I'm always smiling. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Madigan. Uh, Councillor Jeffrey, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Just to clarify for anyone who may take information from this meeting, FCM uh, did clarify very early in the process that this does not include um, any order of, of elected officials within any order of government except the federal. So it's federal um, elected officials only who are not eligible for this. I can see Councillor Madigan is excited by that. Uh, so thank you, Councillor Jeffrey. Are there any other questions or comments from council? Uh, Councillor Dory, I'm gonna let you go last. I'm gonna make my comments. Uh, I understand that the program has not yet uh, been activated, but uh, I do have concerns with the guidelines and restrictions uh, for most of the benefits that the uh, federal and provincial government have enacted. You need to have a decline in income of about 30%. And here it's a 70% decline. And I think that's draconian. I, I think by the time you've lost 70% of your revenues, your rent is probably not your biggest worry. So I would like to see that changed. And I think there's other things that could be changed. And uh, once you have, have programs in effect, it may change the way that the uh, FCM and the upper levels of government look at it. But I do think there's things that need to be changed now uh, so that when it gets uh, implemented, it will be effective. Um, and with that, I will give Councillor Doherty last uh, second. Uh, thank you, Worship. So um, just uh, speaking to the fact that um, the actual application 
uh, portal or, or uh, um, avail application dates uh, are just upon us this week. Um, this program was retroactive to April 1st and it was announced a month ago. And we would have uh, expected that landlords uh, would have been advising their tenants uh, that they did intend to take advantage of this uh, program or at least at the request of tenants, because there has been many, many tenants who have asked for some relief in their rents that the landlords would have said, uh, yes, indeed, because of this program, I will be able to uh, reduce your rent by 75%. We're not hearing this. The town of Oakville is not hearing this. Uh, therefore, it's, an, it's important for us to get on top of this now. Um, this is also partly why uh, this motion includes uh, uh, the, in, the recommendation that the eviction period be extended for six months uh, because the program uh, is uh, now fully a month into uh, its, uh, um, or, or well, has been announced for a month and has just been activated by the time any significant number of landlords take advantage. That will be three months from the beginning of this uh, declaration of emergency. So it is important to allow a little bit more time uh, so that both landlords and tenants uh, can um, uh, make their applications and hopefully take advantage. All right. Thank you very much. We've had a very full discussion. So uh, it's a long motion. Is everyone clear on it or do we need it reread? Okay, everyone needs to be clear on it. So then I will call the vote then. All in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. The next item uh, is moved by Councillor Comey and seconded by Councillor Doherty. Whereas the clerk hereby concurs, the reasons for the in-camera session have been duly reviewed and considered and the matters are authorized under the exception provisions to conduct a closed session. Are you waving your, you can at least let me read it. Are you, did you have a question, Councilor McLeod? I think we haven't done notice of motion or uh, old and deferred and other business yet. Uh, thank you for that, Dan. Notice of motion, item nine. Are there any notices of motion? Seeing none, uh, are there item 10, council business, old or deferred business? Uh, Councillor McLeod. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Through, through you uh, to, well, now I don't know who might answer this because uh, there's been some movement in the force. Um, I'd like to receive an update on the boardwalk. Uh, that was damaged in April of 2018 uh, and which remains unfixed. And I know um, well, I've had some questions from constituents about that. And I wonder, we have had an update previously uh, and around this time last year, we're told that it was gonna take place this year. And anyway, could someone please provide us and the town with an update on when we we'll, might be able to walk on the boardwalk uh, down, by, uh, down by Harborview Park? Certainly, I will look to uh, uh, Executive Director Culver or Director Milanovic. I, I can help with this one, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, as poor, poor Mel's only been there for a week, so I need, I need kind, of, kind of a break. Um, yeah, so the, we, the, uh, there was some issues with uh, the tender in terms of um, how we could go about uh, getting the extension into the West Harbor done. Um, as well as just some difficulties in getting the tender out. Uh, but we did get it back. It has been, um, uh, it's, it's closed now. Uh, a proponent has been selected. Um, and now we're just into uh, contract development and getting ready to get the work scheduled to get the, uh, the burn section completed. Uh, the exception going into the West Harbor, um, it might be delayed until uh, the winter because the goal there, the, the most eff effective, I guess, or um the cheapest way i guess to get it to, to actually be restored is by uh, doing it on top of ice we didn't have ice cover this winter would be hopeful to get it next winter um but uh yeah but the section between 
the section that was uh, burned by the by the fire um, should be uh, we should begin to see work on that very soon. Thank you, Dean. Do I get to give another whoop? There we go. Whoop. I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Any other old or deferred business council? Okay, uh, other business. Uh, uh, got uh, Director Skinner. Go ahead. Or CAO Skinner. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I, uh, <clears throat> I just thought we would gone by other business, so I was so overly enthusiastic with my card, but I did want to provide Council with a quick update about the judicial inquiry. Uh, just from a procedural perspective, I was able to do a meet and greet with the inquiries council and our own council to uh, introduce a change in leadership. And um, uh, they were able to let me know that the summer date that they have currently published on their website about uh, uh, the anticipated timing uh, for Justice Morocco's report is still their current timing. Uh, and is the latest. And they also indicated that the typical approach for a judicial inquiry would be to uh, release, have Justice uh, Morocco, uh, the justice, which in this case is Justice Morocco, uh, release a summary of the report um, in the, uh, the location where the, the inquiry had uh, taken place. Uh, so they're thinking through how that might be tweaked in, in light of COVID, but the intention would be that there would be an announcement of the key recommendations um, uh, hopefully from Collingwood uh, when that uh, comes forward. So as soon as I know anything more, I'll be uh, sure to let uh, let council and, and the public uh, know. Thank you, CAO. I think I saw Councillor Comey and then Deputy Mayor. Go ahead, Councillor Comey. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know what, in light of our uh, motion to put the council meetings back to uh, 5 p.m., uh, overlaid with COVID and work-life balance. I keep mentioning, I'm wondering through you to CEO Skinner, if I might ask, we have the emergency relief fund that council approved to establish. And if staff has any extenuating needs, potentially related to elder care, child care, Wi-Fi, you know, you name it, I certainly would ask that you that it come to council uh, so we can look to that emergency fund uh, to help support staff. Uh, needs to uh, for us to be in their homes at that hour. Uh, it's a HR issue, of, uh, Sonia or Melissa. I don't know if Melissa is present, but uh, we'll put that. Uh, go ahead, uh, CAO. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, we have already extended um, funding to staff who had uh, extraordinary circumstances if they needed uh, something to work at home. So, for example, if they didn't already have internet or it wasn't sufficient. Uh, to uh, cover any incremental costs. Uh, we hadn't yet looked at things like emergency uh, child care for, for example, for an evening meeting during this time. So we will take that away and, and look into it. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you so very much. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Uh, through you perhaps to um, uh, CAO Skinner. Um, there was a, uh, a memorandum of understanding between the uh, town and the BIA that uh, was uh, at some, it, in some point of either starting or to the midpoint uh, in terms of the development process. And I'm just wondering if you could uh, provide an update and maybe a comment and uh, see what the uh, prospective timeline could be like for that uh, particular document. CAO. Okay. Uh Thank you through you, Your Worship, to uh, Deputy Mayor Hull. Yes, I am aware that there has been a memorandum of understanding that had, had uh, an initial draft created, and I believe there was collaboration between the executive director at the BIA, uh, uh, Su uh, Susan um, Nichols Nicholson, and um, the uh, uh, Martin, our uh, director, um, from our business development center, and also a representative of the Ontario uh, overall association of BIAs to bring in some of the best practices. Um, that draft hasn't gone past the draft stage, and I think it has been distracted somewhat by the uh, by the COVID uh, situation. However, we do want to push that uh, that agreement forward, and uh, really to emphasize how we can work collaboratively with the BIA. 
uh, in fulfilling their mandate to um, uh, to spend the BIA funding on things that will enhance our business district and to uh, attract shoppers and business to the uh, to the area. Time frame wise, I'd like to talk to the BIA about their capacity, but I would think that sometime over the summer before the fall, from a, uh, a town staff perspective, we'd be able to uh, to push that uh, that forward and potentially a bit a bit sooner. But uh, I think that would be quite doable. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any follow up? Uh, no specific follow-up, just thank you. I appreciate that update. Thank you, Sonia. Any other business, uh, Council? All right, now we are at the motion uh, at the appropriate time. My office is about 110 degrees, so I'll be happy to get in camera. Uh, so it's moved by Councillor Comey, seconded by Councillor Doherty. Whereas the clerk hereby concurs, the reasons for the in-camera session have been duly reviewed and considered and the matters are authorized under the exception provisions to conduct a closed session in accordance with the Municipal Act prior to proceeding into closed session. Therefore, be it resolved that this council proceeds in camera in order to address a matter pertaining to personal matters about identifiable individuals, including town or local board employees, items for discussion, trails and active transportation advisory committee appointments, an acting CAO performance plan. Uh, and are there any questions or comments before I call the vote? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. Um, it's now 10 to three. So uh, why don't we take this opportunity for a bio break and uh, we will resume at 3 p.m. Thank you. All right, am I good to go, Chris? About three seconds, yeah. Okay. All right, council, can I get a uh, um, motion to rise and report? Uh, and the motion is The bylaw number 2020-35 being a bylaw to appoint members to the Trails and Active Transportation Advisory Committee be enacted and passed this 25th day of May 2020. Sorry, appointing, we, we sorry? Need a, the motion to rise and report. Oh, okay. Motion to rise and report. Uh, so moved by Councillor Madigan, seconded by Councillor Berman. All in favor? Thank you. That is carried. Uh, so now we will uh, get the rise and report and uh, we have um, uh, gone through the applications and there were many and thank you to all the applicants for the trails and active transportation committee. It was a very tough decision and uh, we had lots of wonderful applicants and our hope is that the applicants that uh, were not successful uh, have the opportunity to serve with the committee and work as trail captains and in other capacities uh, to assist with the uh, committee. Um, and the motion that is moved by, uh, let me get it on the floor, uh, council I'm member. Re I'm recusing. Okay, thank you, Councilor Jeffrey. So Councilor Jeffrey has recused yourself. Uh, the, uh, that bylaw number 2020-35 being a bylaw to appoint members to the Trails and Active Transportation Advisory Committee be enacted and passed this 25th day of May, 2020. And we have appointed for uh, terms of three years, Murray Knowles, Julie Nolan, Marion Stempfley, two-year terms to Chris Jeffrey and Jack Marley, and one-year terms to Justin Jones and Jeff Young. And this uh, council has also uh, carried forward and reappointed uh, George Christie as an honorary uh, member of the Trails and Active Transportation Committee for the duration of this uh, council term. And so again, I wanna thank everyone for their um, interest. Uh, it was really, uh, there was a lot of applicants and we hope that they will get engaged with the committee, whether they were appointed or not. And so uh, if there are any questions or comments, council, seeing none, I will call the vote then. All in favor? 
And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And uh, I will now, if we can get Councillor Jeffrey back, I will look for the confirmatory bylaw and it's moved by Councillor Jeffrey and seconded by Councillor Dory. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2020 36, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of the council held May 25, 2020, be enacted and passed this 25th day of May 2020. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. And I will now look for an adjournment, Councillor Jeffrey. Moved by Councillor Jeffrey. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you very much, everyone. We got a lot done today. Get out and enjoy the balance of the weather. Thanks. Thank you.